I was asked to show how I built this ring cutting jig. Also, if I was going to make and sell them. I will be showing how I made this one, but I also will show how one can be made without any metalworking equipment using these parts. Make sure you watch to the end for the bonus information. As always, this is how I do it, and if you choose to make one, you are responsible for making and using it. So let's get going. So in a recent video, I used this ring cutting jig that I made. And I knew there would be a lot of questions about it, and there was. And one of them was, could you show how you made that? And yeah, I can show you how I make it, and I'll do that right now. The other question that really makes me hesitate is, are you going to make them and sell them? Well, there's a lot of complications with that. Not all tool posts are the same size, and not all banjos are the same. I made this specifically to fit my banjo. If I made one for another Laguna, I know how to do it. But if I made it for another manufacturer, I would have to do a lot of research to know where to put this because I want this always to be to the point where it can touch the ring that I'm turning. I don't make it touch, but I want to get it that close. Also, uh, making and selling a tool like this, uh, there's probably a certain amount of liability involved and I would probably have to get insurance if I was going to manufacture and sell these. But what I will do is I'll show you how I actually was going to make it. And if you're not a metal worker, you won't need to be one. You just need to be a woodworker. And we're not making this out of wood. So stand by and I'll uh, show you what that's all about. But right now I'm going to show you the little bit of complications with how this has to fit. I went ahead and moved the banjo over here so I could show you what I'm talking about. They're not all the same. Mine has a section of metal here for reinforcement that sticks out quite a ways. Some of them are just round all the way down. I want this ring cutting jig to be as close to the wood as I can. So I made this just beyond this section of metal. That way, no matter where it's at, it's always past that. This will never get in the way. I can always get this right up against the turning if I want to. So let's get on back with uh, showing how I build this. All right, I'll go ahead and show you how I made this. And I, I like to make a lot of things. And some of it's because I guess I'm thrifty, but I also enjoy making things. And I have the equipment to do it. I have a CNC milling machine and I have a metal lathe. And I've got lots of scraps of metal laying around from different projects. This is nothing more than one inch round stock aluminum, 6061. Plenty adequate for what we're doing. I put that in the metal lathe and drilled and tapped a quarter twenty hole. This was a somewhat rectangular piece of aluminum before it turned into this. I set this up and programmed it and I, I cut that outside profile. This could have been done on a bandsaw, but uh, since I have a CNC mill, that's what I did and then I milled that slot in it. Drill the hole in here and countersunk it and put the screw in and we don't need to tighten that all the way up. But I put the screw in it. That's just a hose clamp that sets the height. So that was pretty simple because I had the equipment and I know a lot of people do not have it. And I went out and purchased the things that anybody could buy and make something very similar to this. And let me get that out and I'll show you what it is. I purchased these two items here so I could show you how I could have made this ring cutting jig without having any metalworking equipment other than maybe a hacksaw. So this is a Nova product and you could get it in a Robert Sorby. I didn't know which one to get. This ended up being a little less money and I went with it. This is the modular tool post holder. It's a one inch diameter. You can also get it in five eighths. You can get it eight inches long or five inches long. And I wasn't sure which one I should get for my lathe. And the eight inch long was five dollars cheaper than the five inch long. So I got it. And sure enough, I needed to cut just a little bit off of it. And that's okay because uh, it wasn't that hard to do. That is the box scraper rest they call it. It's a flat platform. 
when I saw this item I thought there's a good possibility this could be modified into making this and we will not need to use metal for that modification <clears throat> this one is called the large I bought it because I felt that I could use it for its intended use and get better use out of it getting the long one the short one's an inch shorter. That's what I would get if I was making the ring cutting jig. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put a piece of aluminum on it that I cut out because I don't want to cut this up and drill holes in it. So I have this scrap of aluminum and I've marked that out and that's going to be a hole in it and that'll go onto here. And I need to tap that. Well, it happened really quick because I already had it done. So this is, again, simulating the one that I purchased. And you won't be making this piece. You'll be modifying the purchased one. All right, so that's almost a ring cutting fixture in itself. There's one problem, though. Your parting tool is going to hit here and you're not going to be able to get much of a cut. And just like this one here, I put a step in it just so that I could get farther through the cut. So the way I'm going to do that is I'll be adding a piece of wood. Now, if you're a wood turner, you probably are a woodworker as well. So what I'll show you here is the only thing you really need to modify in this system other than taking a hacksaw and getting that shape on it. And I'll tell you what that angle is. That works out to where you can cut a much steeper angle than you probably ever will for a bow on a board. That's a block of wood that I've cut that is the same width as this. And for this one it would be the same width as that. So I don't have a, well I did have a line drawn on it, but I'll need to match that and put a hole in here so I have a way to screw it down. Well that's what that piece looks like. So now that is almost ready for the next step and that is notching this area out so that your tool will be able to pass down here and make your cut. I don't know if you can see those lines there but I will go over now and I'll bandsaw that out and I'll be right back. Okay, I've just cut that section out. I've got a couple holes in here and we're almost done. I drilled a couple holes in here and countersunk the bottom side. And I also drilled through so I wouldn't split the wood and put a little pilot in there. I'm choosing a screw that will not go through these pieces. So that's just to keep it from moving around. Now I just need to put a slot in there for my parting tool and that's about a sixteenth wide. I'm going to hook this up so that I can use it for a vise and we'll put this piece in the banjo and we'll see if we can saw us a little kerf in there. So this little scrap here, I cut a kerf in it about the depth I want and it's the right width. So this is not a very good saw because it's a little bit crooked. So maybe that will help because I need to make it a little wider. So I'll use that guide and just Start cutting this a curve. Okay, I think I'm about down to depth and I know it's not wide enough. But I wonder if I can just carve this out. Yeah, I think I could do that. 
and use the parting tool to create the curve. It's just kind of cutting to size. All right, that'll do it. It should work good. Let's get a blank up here and we'll make a couple cuts and see how this worked out. I want to go ahead and try this out. I found a scrap piece of pine. I cut it round. I've got it hot glued on a tannin. I'll just cut a couple rings. I doubt that I'll glue this together, but we just want to test this. I'll start with a 50 degree cut. So it's pretty simple to set up. If you saw my other video, I popsicle stick fits in there. That's 50 degrees. I already locked that down. And I used my very thin parting tool. It's a Robert Sorby 2 millimeter. I think they call it a micro parting tool. I will get my face shield. And we'll cut a couple rings here. About 950 RPM. I'll go ahead and point this out. I was listening for the sound and it starts to lighten up. I know I'm almost through and I just let go and it was still somewhat attached but it did not tear out any of the wood on that ring and that's the beauty of doing that. So I'll cut one more ring but I want you to see how clean that cut is and the trick is a sharp tool and you can hear when it's almost all the way through and when you hear that sound change don't push anymore. Just let the tool finish its cut and it'll practically just fall off like this was hanging by little fuzzies. And uh, that's what you want to get for gluing them together. So what I've done, I know this was just about building the tool, but I like to talk about this. If you measure that diameter, that's what's going to glue against here. That surface glues against there. I have that set and I just reached down here and took a guess where it would be, put a pencil line on it and that's right on. What I want to do is cut that side of the line leaving half of the line and then we will be perfect. I decided to go with 55 on this. I think 60 would be too close to the, to the uh, glued on tenon. And that is through. We'll get some of this cleaned up and we'll come back and we'll wrap this up talking about the ring cutting fixture. Well, to wrap this up, the only two things I purchased was this platform and a tool post. And they were both made by Nova. Nova says that this tool post is one inch, but it's actually two thousandths less than one inch. My Laguna has a one inch shaft on it and it clamps up very easily. This is much harder to get clamped up. And the Laguna uses a system that comes around it and clamps it. If you have the system with a stud on there, it doesn't really matter. But I would measure the shaft that you have. And if you have one that clamps around there, I'd make sure I get one that matches the current shaft that you have. This is the only piece that I made. It's just the guide. The only thing that I would have to do to make this work is get it out located on the end and take a hacksaw and cut the little metal pieces that you're seeing stick out past it. That allows this to swing as close to your work as you can. It wouldn't matter which size of 
platform used. This one's very strong. This, this would be out here if you had the larger one, and then it would be back this way an inch if you had the shorter one. You'd still want to cut those corners off. I drilled two holes through the platform and I came up with wood screws into the bottom of this and making sure I didn't go through the thin area. And that holds it quite well. So that's pretty much it. It's really easy to do and it works really good. I think you could see that. And there was a lot of inquiries about this and I, I do hope that it was helpful and I hope you enjoyed the video. This piece of wood here represents the block of wood that I used to make the wooden part of the ring cutting fixture. I'll remove what I cut away and explain how I got there. So that's what it looks like after it's cut out. There's really only three dimensions that I can start with. The rest of them need to be reverse engineered off the platform and the parting tool. I'll show you what those dimensions are. The nose angle I make at 54 degrees, included angle. It's 27 on a side. That allows you to cut over 60 degrees for your rings. And that's more than enough for a bowl from a board. This dimension, one and an eighth inch, I feel that that's about the right length for the parting tool to slide in. If you went way back here, not only would it restrict the depth of cut, it also creates a little more friction and it doesn't run as smooth. If you use very much less, then it's not quite as stable and it could wobble a little bit. So that's how I came up with that. The other dimension that I can start with is about three eighths of an inch for this area here. This is the area that gets screwed down to the platform. The rest of those dimensions need to be reverse engineered. And what I need to do is figure out not only the bottom of that slot, but the height of this. And what I use to determine that is the parting tool. That's the parting tool. So I measure how big a diameter your handle is and how far it is from the bottom of that to the underside of the blade of your parting tool. This will determine how far up from the base the bottom of the slot is. Now, you still want to leave between a sixteenth and an eighth inch clearance for that handle. You don't want it catching on this edge. Once I've determined the bottom of that slot, I cut the top of the slot approximately the same height as what the parting tool is. So this is a quarter inch on mine. I've got that at a quarter of an inch. You could be a little less. I don't think I'd go higher. So that's pretty much how I determine that. If you for some reason have the longer base, that's not a problem. You just do the same thing. You use that dimension there and if you want more wood going back to the longer base, that's fine. It's not going to get in your way. So that's kind of how I did it, and I was kind of hoping that this would help explain things a little bit better. I know that uh, pictures and drawings can help a lot, so I thought I'd go ahead and do this. I'll put some pictures at the end of all of this with dimensions. Be sure to watch to the end. There's more important information coming. I hope this was helpful. If so, let me know. This drawing shows the important dimensions that I used. These are photos of the jig and how I used it. I also painted the jig just to show it off a little bit better. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. For all you subscribers, thank you very much. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Till the next time, see you later.